say about New York Attention? Um, the meeting is called to order. Uh, guests, welcome and thank you. Uh, I understand that some of you are actually going to be taking a summer tour. That's terrific. And I would invite any of, the, um, any of those guests who are here who did not know that we were going on a tour for the first sort of, probably could take up to a half an hour, um, I would invite you to join us. And you would be able to, um, to see what we see and um, talk with us and, or talk with the students. And, um, experience what we experience. So, in any event, we have, um, under agenda revisions, um, we've got a pretty action-packed agenda as it is. Are there any revisions that anybody has to propose? No? Good. All right. Then we'll stick with what we've got, and if something crops up, then we'll deal with it. Now, um, public comments. Are there any general public comments? Vera, welcome. Um, any general public comments that anyone would like to share before we head off to explore? I, on the agenda items, there will be opportunity for, um, for the public to comment as we go along. Um, I, I have heard from some members of the public, and um, in particular, the issue of lunch and the cost of lunch um, has uh, been raised. And uh, I mean, I could probably say that to add to our ever lengthening list of future agenda items. But you mean the cost is too high? There's a perception, it seems, that we're getting kind of to that point. What is the cost of lunch? Four dollars. For kids at all the schools? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know, but well, I need what, a couple kids. of board members. Yeah. 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 A few board members had asked us to investigate the possibility or, or what the fees would be for the district. Additional costs would be required if we were to subsidize the entire program. And I've already spoken with uh, Lori about that, and we intended to discuss it with our finance committee. So we can That's bring great. it back to the board next time. That, yeah. that sounds like a good way to proceed. How much were they last year? 375. It was different across all the schools, I and mean, we, we normalized it, so yeah. we leveled it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, Let's uh, set out, embark on our tour. Okay, so we need three groups. And so I know the, the easiest system is to count off one, two, three. Um, and then we will, uh, um, we'll have our groups back of uh, students. There will be a pair of students that are going to take us on a tour to the middle school. Fantastic. Great. We're in your hands, Stephen, if you want to have us count off. Vera, can you start us off? One. Two. Three. 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 Just become a one, though. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Great. So, and members of the public, welcome here. Thank We're you. turning them last. Thank and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you guys go home and do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah, we were just talking about how this was the high point of the meeting. It's, oh. it's hard to. Uh, yeah. But I have a booth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, we. Uh, do you have anything further, Stephen, under under agenda item two point one? Um, I did want to just share uh, the quick updates on some of the things that are happening here at U32, since you're here at U32, yeah. but also a big shout out uh, to students who were organized by Amy Molina 
um, to, to do the tours, and so uh, that was a big shout out for her to get those uh, kids. That was, to do a tour. that was a terrific idea. Yeah. Yeah. Did great. Well, yeah. well, they say it's so much better than we do. Anyway. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to uh, to let the board and public know that uh, this summer we had our first summer school in a very long time. Um, I know that some of you were able to come and see the presentations. Uh, you know, it was really, um, really designed to help a few students um, meet some proficiencies that they may not otherwise have been able to meet or had schedules that made it difficult for them to meet those uh, proficiencies. And um, we really saw our bulk of students were in science, math, uh, financial literacy, and then one student in health as well. And um, we, we really feel like we learned a lot about summer school and how we might want to organize it more in the future. It was a small number of kids. There were only 14 students that were a part of it. Um, and it was really a part of our, um, some professional development that our teachers did in project-based learning as well. And so, you know, it was a nice tie-in for that. Um, I appreciate those of you who were able to make it and, uh, and see the presentation uh, from the kids. Uh, but as you saw, the project was built around our greenhouse and how hopefully Got a little information to the board. I think it's something that our horticulture class is really going to look at now as to how can they take some of those ideas and expand upon them and, and maybe do some more, as well as our accounting class actually might be doing some work as well on that. So some nice segues from the summer to the work that they're doing now in class. Um, and then I also wanted to just report, we had three major uh, capital projects here this summer. We did the uh, hood in the kitchen had to be replaced um, because uh, it was not up to code and we couldn't have used the kitchen this year without it being replaced. Um, we had extensive renovations to the elevator that was in our, that's from the atrium to the, uh, the both middle school and up to the second floor. That elevator had to be renovated. And then um, as you can probably still see, the track is still under construction, although it is only awaiting its final surface and so there's a cure time that has to happen on asphalt before you can adhere a track to it um, and that company should be here Monday they're saying that they'll be here to start putting down the uh, final surface on the track and that will take us through to the first part of October to get all of that completed line striping and have the track released to us at that point in time and so so that was the big project of the of the summer that's still kind of lingering over us and so well, those were some of the big things that were here at U32. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen, can yeah. anyone be on the track when it's... No, do not get on the track right now. <laughs> so, so they quite literally washed it last week with Dawn with dishwasher soap in the pressure sprayer because it removes oils really well, apparently. Yeah. Um, and that's what they're trying to get off of the track, and that's the cure time. So uh, please do not go on it. Or step across the big fence with signs that say, do not cross. Um, we've had to throw a few people. Yeah. How's that working with students? Yeah. But, uh, students no, it's more adults than students. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Any questions for Stephen? Um, are, are you going to do summer school again next year? Well, it remains to be seen. It's a funding issue at this point, just to see how we want to fund it and what we want to do. Um, I'm sure that we would have a higher interest in kids, um, and we would probably have, uh, we have a better understanding of what we need to do to organize it, yeah. and so that we get more kids and more teachers involved. Were the students self-selected? Yes. Self yes. Well, there, was, there was some, you know, yeah, there was certainly some, uh, Nudging, yes, I think that's a great word, um, of some students. But uh, I would say that financial literacy is a really good example of a group of students who are uh, primarily at our uh, tech center, at the career center, and they um, their schedule doesn't necessarily allow to get that class, and that's a requirement that's unique to U32. Um, other schools don't necessarily have a financial literacy uh, graduation requirement. And so that additional class sometimes creates problems in their, their limited schedule. And so for those students, it meant that they were able to do more at the Career Center next year as a result of being able to take classes this summer. So that was a really positive thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So were these mostly high school? All high school. Okay. Are you growing the herbs? Uh, we've got a few growing. Okay. And, and we did a big harvest of basil um, for pesto. So that was uh, that was a good move for us, and garlic actually. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Wasn't there one of the students who discovered that locally sourced herbs of some sort, I forget which herb it was, could be procured much more cheaply than, than from wherever it was coming so, from? So I think even broader than that was that we identified that all the herbs in our kitchen were coming from California. Um, and so from a sustainability standpoint, that's not necessarily the best thing for us. And herbs are probably one of the easier things for us to grow um, in the garden um, for the needs that we had. And so they, their, their first recommendation is that we probably look at how we can provide just the herbs for our cafeteria through our greenhouse. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. All year. all year long. Yeah, well, because one of the things they were worried about is not being able to grow basil all year round, which we all know you can't do in Vermont. Um, and then we found they found out from Brian Food Service that all he does is make pesto out of it. And so they're like, oh, well, then we can grow a lot of basil at once and uh, process it all up. And so that was by far the number one herb. We, we apparently procure about 80 pounds of basil a year. So that was great. Yeah. That's really good. It was nice to see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Deborah. Hi. I just wanted to uh, give you a few highlights for my report. Welcome, everyone. And it was a very, very worthwhile tour. Please thank Amy for us, Stephen, for organizing that. We had a very good week of in-service sessions, including uh, three days in the schools and one day at the district-wide celebration. For the entire week, our theme was unification. And uh, we were also focusing on uh, reintroduction and self-assessment on our Washington Central implementation plan. Uh, from that, as I think you may recall from our last meeting, when you saw some evidence of that at Calus, uh, next week our administrative team is going to be coming together to review the results of that self-assessment. And we'll make some decisions about how we wish to proceed in terms of setting goals and plans to improve uh, the work that's happening at this point in time. If you recall, that is a five-year plan, which is going to be continuing through 2021. So we're just about midway through the process of implementation right now. Um, I want to make a few comments, and um, also thanks to both Flora and Scott for having the time and being able to attend the in-service session on the 22nd. Uh, that day, we honored many people, and it was really quite exciting and engaging for the staff. In particular, I wanted to publicly uh, comment about our two teachers of the year who are going to be honored next month, uh, Ben Weiss from Rumley Memorial School and Christina Martin from uh, U32, a social studies teacher here. Uh, and additionally, uh, as you can see in my notes, we had hundreds, literally hundreds of staff members involved in the summer and in the prior year in various uh, teacher-led or teacher-involved activities, which is, again, a testament to the wonderful culture of collaboration that we have built here over many years. So we want to thank all of our staff for their hard work. Uh, the first week of school went extremely well, and uh, following that strong start, as I mentioned in my report, I was able to personally visit every classroom in the district, even if it was just for a few moments, but I wanted to uh, greet each teacher and the students and I could see already that we were off to a very strong start. Our schools were extremely clean and well-maintained and ready to go for our students. Um, also, we uh, were able to calculate our enrollment. So as of just after the start of the school year, our enrollment is 1602, which is 11 more than last year in October of this year. So that is helpful information. You can see how it breaks down. Um, there were mostly gains in our schools, and uh, that's a wonderful thing to see when we're in an era of declining enrollment. Uh, there's a quick uh, board committee update, and our finance committee is meeting monthly, and they'll be meeting next week on their initial meeting. Our negotiations committee, uh, we are yet to finalize the schedule, but we intend to bring them together for one meeting, including the board members and our uh, external members to just review our processes and get prepared for uh, the start of the school year. And um, finally, in follow-up to our last meeting, we were able to secure front porch forum access for all of our board members. So I hope you uh, know that that's something that you have the opportunity to access to be able to look at the forum in all towns. 
And then where you live, of course, you can participate. That's how they have it set up. Anyone had a chance to try it out yet to see if their access works? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, if you have any problems, let us know, and we'll be sure to solve that for you. Um, so a great start to the school year. Very, very good. Thank you. Yeah, you're any questions for Deborah? I'm pretty impressed you got in every classroom on the first day of school. <laughs> Was that on the first day? That was the first day. day. Oh first day in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then I'm visiting weekly. <coughs> so I think that's really important. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Sure. Well, we're here because of our students. So that's where I need to be. Great. Um, any other questions for Deborah? Wonderful. Thank you very much, Deborah. You're welcome. Um, now, 2.3 leadership team report. Um, how do you want to have this go? Well, let's see. We have put together um, a collaborative report. and um, Which I, I must say I like very much. Mm -hmm. It's very comprehensive and easy to process. Mm -hmm. I think we could. Um, did you, would you like the individuals to make a few comments? Or do you want to take a moment to review it and ask questions? Either way would work fine for us. Mm -hmm. I think it would also be able to get feedback from you all about if we picked the right elements or um, if you felt like you got to highlight the new school. Yeah. Um, I can tell you certainly my sense is that you hit the right elements. And I w as I was reading through it, I was trying to think, what else would I like to know that they're not telling me? <laughs> <laughs> and last, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I will, maybe, at some point, but um, I, I guess just in, if I may, just in general, your, um, your sense of how things are starting out this year, um, you know, the feel of it. Is that, that's, is that a question? That's a, that's a, a question that I have just lobbed <laughs> indiscriminately. <laughs> Yeah. Things that you do. Yeah, exactly. But maybe I can start with you, Kat. Would I like to talk about um, I feel like this year is really exciting. I've been really excited by the fact that we've got what feels like for Calis, our little small school, like an influx of students. Um, but some are coming with some challenges that I you don't get to anticipate if you don't get a lot of notice in advance. So there's a bit of scramble to think about how to meet all those students' needs. Um, what I just adore about my staff and my colleagues to, that I get to reach out to is um, the sense that the students and their needs and getting that met in a way that is um, that meets them where they're at, that we're all on that same path and we're very much in alignment with um, that sense of priority. So that feels great. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think that as Deborah mentioned, the in-service days really started us off on the right foot. Um, one of the activities that you read about that we did is around the self-care and the adults taking care of themselves and trying to continue that practice as we move into this school year. I think it's going to be really important. Mm -hmm. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of the students. Um, and I think the feedback we got around that was really positive. Great. Stephen, I, I, I don't mind hearing from you again if you have something. Well, I, I would say that the, the opening of school this year, we, we made a, uh, an effort last year to change some of the way we structured the beginning of school. Um, we had a group of teachers and some students who came together to say, we felt really rushed in the way that we used to open school because we were trying to get every class in in the first day. And we really scaled that back. And it has made such a difference. It feels like we instead of trying to hit the ground and run as fast as we can, you know, jump, it's like jumping off of a moving train almost, right? Um, but, uh, but it really, it was, it's much smoother now. Um, we have some time built in for some reflection to make sure that everything gets taken care of at the beginning of the year. We do picture day, and I've always done picture day, right at the beginning of the school year, which is unusual for schools. You know, most schools, you know, there, there's that whole piece. It has worked so wonderfully at U32 in the way that we structure our opening day so that we, we get that taken care of. And, um, and I would say that that self-care and reducing the stress at the beginning of the school year, it really helps with that. 
And so I, I really commend that group for kind of sticking themselves out there and trying something new the way that we start school. And this year really showed that it's working and it, we just made a few modifications, <coughs> so, so it's nice. Excellent, great. Go ahead. Uh, Jody is off to a class in Texas. Um, swimmingly good start. Um, <laughs> Recognizing that there's lots of stuff that I don't know, my staff has been very patient with reminding me that no, Gillian, you have to take your whistle and your walkie talkie out on recess duty. <laughs> so I get out there and do it. Um, so, really good energy. People really liked starting, my staff really liked starting the in service days at Doty. Here, it felt like coming home and sort of reconnecting with family before going and, and doing the U32 thing, sort of like. Stepping into it really nicely. We're uh, focusing on two major, uh, not any, oh, I guess I'll call them initiatives this year of sort of doing a reboot um, and recommitment to our discipline process, teaching students pathways to self control. And we're looking at tightening up and streamlining our MTSS process. And I honestly could not be happier that I have joined the Doty family. I'm in rapture. I would say things in Rumney, at Rumney are going really, really well. Um, we had a great week with faculty and staff um, during in service, which seems like so long ago now, but um, we really set a tone um, focusing on creating an, a climate and culture that's supportive and inclusive, and, um, and that's definitely carried into our first week and a half with students. Um, feedback has been positive from kids, from faculty and staff, from families as well. Um, so there's, I think there's a pretty good feeling walking through the hallways and, and hearing good things about that. We, um, we're, we're not focusing really on any new initiatives. It's on doing what, what we've been doing, um, doing that well and tightening um, bit by bit. And I think that's been helpful for faculty and staff that we don't have new additional things that we're taking on. So no, so good. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Casey. And how about you? How do you like yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, ditto about opening a school. Very smooth for us of Berlin. Um, everyone energized and just feeling like they can get back into the flow pretty naturally. Um, we only had two new teacher staff that uh, settled in very nicely and felt very supported. Um, but definitely I'll echo the feedback about the insert this week and just having some time in the, in the, in the building, um, the work that we did at the, the uh, together um, at our SU day. Uh, so just really good positive feedback about, about that week and just feeling like everybody was ready to go on the first day. So really good opening. Um, our big focus this year is, is digging deep into the math program and um, ensuring that we're implementing that. Uh, we have had, I don't know if it is the lowest, but in terms of our math scores, we have Done very well, so um, that's a focus for us as we move forward. And um, I'll I'll comment too about our 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 monthly admin reports. We have templates for each month, and we try to highlight different things each month. So you know, this this month hiring and summer work. So mm -hmm. next month next month might be something else that might be more. For the season and yeah, and, and do you all sort of figure it out amongst yourselves? Yeah. Aaron, we are. Aaron pretty. set up the template and uh -huh. Alicia made it look pretty. She made it look pretty. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> we, we generated these topics at the, um, at the retreat this summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, might be things next month that you're thinking about pushing to talk about, but maybe you'll see next month. Mm -hmm. Great, yes. great. So, Lori, I kind of jumped over you just so that I could get to the schools first, but um, mm -hmm. I have all kinds of stuff to add. Um, so, oh I wanted to let you know that um, we met the, the board's uh, goal of having the work in with the email. Um, Penny Sambo, who does accounts payable, um, should get recognition for that. Um, if you saw the actual backup, it is clearly this thick, just for this check run. Um, and then the second piece is I promised that everyone would get paid this week, and they are, thanks to Carla Messier and Virginia Breer. It was a long journey, but everything's up and running, and the paycheck is in direct deposit right queue right now. Thank God. So I just wanted to recognize <laughs> all of that. <laughs> I know, take that off. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <coughs> Wonderful. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, Bill, Kelly? I feel like I've just been supporting all that you've just heard about. You know, you've been busy in schools, helping folks problem solve, new kids that were surprises that have some high level of need, um, staffing issues that are coming up, right? With new kids, sometimes comes staffing, so I've been working with principals and trying to figure that stuff out. And gearing up to start the plan. Yeah, yeah right. I would echo that. I think Kelly and I keep an eye on our more vulnerable population. And for me at U32, that definitely means looking at that transition from elementary school to seventh grade and keeping a VIP list, so to speak, making sure that we're wrapping around some of those kids. And uh, also, I would suggest from the eighth to ninth grade year is critical. And uh, understanding that that transition to a transcript that will follow a kid is, is super important. And, um, and wrap it around them as well. Do you feel like you're able to stay on top of it? Of yeah, problems? I feel in a much better place. As you know, I came to this position uh, kind of a circuitous route, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I really feel like um, I'm hitting my stride. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Sure. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll echo what Kelly said. You know, a lot of my work is supporting the work that everybody else is doing. Um, we had a pretty good start to the school year. Um, we've been down for we've been down two staff members since late July, mm -hmm. and we are close to hiring for both of those positions. I hope, um, but Craig and Mike deserve a lot of credit for helping us get everything off the ground. Uh, being so short staffed, they put in a lot of hours to to make sure that everything went smoothly. Are you guys being included in the self-care thing? <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we, we should do some self-care. <laughs> yeah. next, um, next month. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we did was we changed the way that Chromebooks were distributed this year at the high school, which made a big difference because we didn't have to do, like Stephen was saying, it wasn't this big crazy thing where we were in a cafeteria for half a day handing out Chromebooks. They were all in the rooms, they were ready to go. They gave us a chance to work on it over the summer and roll it out. And then we didn't have this whole big crazy thing happening the first day of school or the first week of school. Um, so we're trying to do more of that sort of work this year. We're trying to be more strategic, um, try to find places where we can be more efficient and streamlined. I um, pretty much said it all. I, I got to on the first two days of school because we start um, 10, 11, 12 on Monday here and then 7, 8, 9 on Tuesday here. On the opposite days, I trained some students for starter practice panels. So I got to see some um, of our high school students on the first day, not the second day, and I got to see our middle school students and some Calis students on the first day, so got to train uh, 10 students to join our panel. So we now have a seven student middle school panel and a seven student high school panel. Wow, great. So that's exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, do any colleagues have questions for leadership team? I was gonna comment, I, I loved the report. I really liked the, the upcoming events. I do too. Mm -hmm. I like the yeah. outcome. Yeah. Having the highlights of everybody and I, I'm glad that you said, I, I'm hoping to see at the next meeting more about you know, our multi-peer supports, how we're supporting our team, you know, either professional development or you know, sort of get a better idea of what we have at all our schools. I have a couple of questions that I think will be evergreen. Mm -hmm. I'll probably ask them every time I get a chance to see all of you. Uh, the first one would be um, in your contacts and conversations with parents in the community. Is there anything that you've heard, you know, any concerns, anything that sort of rises to the board, to the district level of things that we should be thinking about that we're not already? Even if we are already. Even if we are already. <laughs> So I guess the, the second question would be, as you know, we're moving forward here as, as, as one board, I guess, Laura, this is mostly for you, but how, is, how are things different? 
how has the process of getting the year started been different, you know, in this you know governance structure? Any additional challenges? Anything smoother? Anything streamlined? It's a short question, but a long answer. Yeah. So I think um, just in summary, how things are different is if a substitute works in multiple schools, they will get one paycheck. Um, what else is different is having only one treasurer is streamlining a lot of the uh, um, communications. Mm -hmm. After more thought, probably sure. respond sure, a little sure. bit more coherently. <laughs> but it, it for the and, and after a month or two, it'll it'll be clear what you know. Startup always takes time. Yeah, yeah. But once you get the system going, you know how does that go? Right. But for the principals and the leadership team, people in the classrooms and the schools. Well, I think for uh, Dirty Romney, Callis, and Berlin, uh, one. Thing yeah, I got the notice like, oh, Gillian, what are we doing about soccer? And I went, I don't, who knew? <laughs> so, but I think with the, you know, with the really unified mentality, what we were able to do, East Montpelier, it's not that they don't, don't want to play, it's that their rec committee handles it for them, is we were able to come together and problem solve and um, are working to hire a, an athletic director for the elementary schools who takes care of all the coordination for us so that we don't have five schools making five schedules doing five different things. So I think that we're really, I think this was a really great example of how this is really freeing us up to think as, as we're not just, we're not, we're one elementary school that just happens to be in five places is I think what I would say. Yeah, thank you for soccer. You'll have to perform tomorrow. <laughs> and I would say in answer to your first question, Jonas, uh, one of the things that we consistently hear, and I, I think this is universal, is the communication. You know, that just people want to hear more and, and know more and learn more. I mean, we just, that's, I don't know that there's any amount of communication that will be enough, but it's always one of those issues that we try to strive to, to improve that and increase that. And I know that for some of our events, hearing from parents that like, oh, I felt like I knew what was going on, I knew where to be, and all of that. That's always a good feeling, but for every one of those, we have two or three like, well, I didn't know enough, I, I wish I'd gotten more information, and it's just trying to figure out what medium works best for people. Thank you, guys. Yeah, anyone else? We're good? All right, let's move on then to the consent agenda. Approve the minutes of August 21st. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of August 21st? I will move to approve the minutes of August 21st. Thank you, Jonas. Second? I'll second. Jayla seconds. Very good. Any changes? Any um, Anything that needs to be altered? That it finds me. Good. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, everybody's okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. In that case, all in favor of approving the minutes of August 21st, 2019, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay, very good. So, moving on to board organization and planning. Uh, oh, sorry. Can I just like, is it those ones on page 10? Mm -hmm. Yes, I yeah. believe so. It looks like it says dated August 13th. Yeah, I just had to read it. Oh, yeah. So, even though I wasn't there, I moved to amend. <laughs> so that's August 21st. Yes, this is a typographical error, so that can be that okay. can be corrected without any particular board action. Okay. Yes. Where does it say that? At the top. It says 813 versus 821. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm kind of Absolutely fine. Okay, good. So we're on 4.1, the annual meeting date. So the documentation is on page 15 of the agenda packet. And um, so this is a continuation of, of a discussion that we started in Calais a couple weeks ago, 
when we weren't sure as to, or at least I felt I had this nagging suspicion that we had done something with that, but I couldn't remember what. And it turned out that? That's correct. Amazingly, to no one more than myself. <laughs> um, so what, then, now what? Yeah, so in your organizational meeting on April 8th, you did vote to have your annual town meeting to be held on town meeting day. Uh, and um, that means that I will need to coordinate with the town clerks as to how that uh, meeting will be held. Because of course, as you know, that is the date that towns also held their individual meetings. Um, I did reach out to, um, I spoke with a few board members who were there, and I also reached out to the um, board's attorney just to say, well, if the board wanted to change that day, how would they go about it? And um, first of all, there was some general recollection that the intention might have been to hold this meeting sometime during the four days that are permitted to have town meetings. Um, but that's not exactly how the motion was worded. I specifically stated the town meeting day. Um, the, uh, our attorney advised that in order to change it, we would actually have to do so on a warrant article, which could be done at town meeting, uh, the coming one. So there's a couple of options when we could vote early to try to change it, which would be a, you know, a special meeting or a special election, perhaps in November or wait until March and just accommodate our town's meeting schedules and hold it perhaps early in the morning uh, for that one day. So um, so that is the general information that you see summarized here and you can, if you have time to think about it, if you wish to try to make a change, if there's a strong desire to move it to another date, uh, we have to give 30 days notice to the voters about an article that they will vote on and the first week in November is when our elections other offices that are coming up, so that might be one option. But I do have a meeting coming up with our town clerks, as you noticed in my report, so I'd be more than happy to work with them about how we might schedule this, and I could report back to the board about um, the feasibility of running our annual meeting on the same day as town meeting. So it's up to you all, how you'd like to proceed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, um, questions? Terrific. How long do they anticipate this annual meeting being? There's very little business to conduct. You essentially um, have board reports. Uh, we elect officers for the board, which are the clerk and the treasurer and the moderator. And that's something else if you wish to change to Australian ballot, you could ask the voters to give permission to change. Uh, and, um, and give a report about the budget. But because that's the day that people are voting, um, I would imagine that Maybe some people may have voted or they're on their way to vote. So we hope that we'll be able to run informational sessions in advance of town meeting day to accommodate that request. So it could be anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. It's, it could be very brief. Depends on interactions and questions that may come up. From the so the annual meeting is not, um, sorry, let me mm -hmm. get that. Go ahead. We had asked the question about did we find out if we vote? I had the vague recollection that at our towns we voted for at least the clerk already, so yeah. that Mary was already now. I did ask the question. And we don't? You didn't. In your reorganization meeting, you talked about questions and board of school directors, but you didn't address officers as being by Australian Bell. That's what our attorney advised us. That we would have to get, we would just have to ask the, the yeah, voters sure. if they'd agree to move those positions to Australian ballot if the board chose to do that. And the budget will be on Australian ballot on Correct. town meeting day. Yes. Exactly. And so, and so, there's, the, so there's the added complication of having to have the informational meeting within 10 days. We would still the, have to do of, that. Of the annual meeting Correct. and the complication is that February break is Correct. right there. Some boards use the night before town meeting for informational and annual meeting or the week prior, which is a little more complicated for us because that's a school break yeah. week and many families are might not be available or in town. But that would be a future date. We'd have to look at changing it. Yes. Before we go to the public, any other board members? Yeah, we, so the candidates for board positions would still be elected? Australian ballot. Australian ballot. Yes. Okay. okay. Rick. I made this comment, you know, based on a couple of weeks when we talked about this issue. You know, 10 days even, you know, 
pay public feedback at that point is inconsequential. Everything, budgets are posted. You know, you basically can't change anything. I hope this board is having, you're planning on having serious meetings. Oh, yeah. Before, you know, in the fall, when decision making is being yes. done. Because it's, it's, it's almost pointless to have the meetings at all under this. There's essentially nothing that can be done, you know, on town meeting day or, you know, it's informational maybe at the point that we guess very few people by, certainly by town meeting day, within 10 days. Yeah, the, well, they've already lost the battle of really Well, the, 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 crucial, right the crucial period of is budget formation time. Um, and we intend to conduct, the Finance Committee will be doing a lot of the, um, the prep work, but we intend to just have the actual development of the different drafts of the budget done in open meeting, um, well publicized, uh, public forums about the budget as we proceed, and um, you know try to try to make it as um, give people as much of a chance as they can to you know to consult with us on it. Well, I hope that it goes more than the budget; it's directional too. It's you know, where the school is being taken. That's that actually is happening before you develop a budget, correct? Is that that's what drives how you spend your money? So I think that that's the place that people would probably be interested. Well, yeah, all of that should be happening in open session, um, yeah. and with uh, you know identified very clearly on the agenda so that people know what's up. Um, anybody else on this? Um, <coughs> any? I, I I would like you know I I have a. Um, I have a thought about this mm -hmm. that we don't have it yet, although perhaps we will in another few um, stops on our agenda. But um, maybe sort of refer it to the policy committee to kind of sort out because of the, you know, the various legal ramifications and, and have the policy committee <coughs> of, offer the board some viable options. I know from my perspective, whatever we do, ideally should reinforce town meeting and not subtract or distract from town meeting. Um, this would be a priority for me. But if we could have maybe the policy committee, uh, that would be one of its, um, I mean, one of the items that it would have on its agenda as well. Just as a reminder, a 30-day warning will require action by the board at the next meeting. Um, because for November, for November, for November change. If you were yeah. looking at, and, and that would avoid us having to schedule a special meeting or election for in every mm -hmm. town. Uh, so I would just, I'm happy to involve anyone in the conversation, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we would need, if we were to make a change, in advance of town meeting, it would probably be best served to do it by that date, by, by September 18th, by the next meeting. By the next meeting. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. What is the driving question or um, issue with leaving it on town meeting day as we voted on in April? Your uh, town clerks or their designees will need to come to the annual meeting and um, with their registered voter list and check in all of the participants and that will distract uh, or detract from, from their town meeting preparations that day. So we would have to ensure that this meeting did not overlap with the town meetings because they'll be required to do the same uh, at their local towns. That's the primary hang up really. If we didn't have that element, the voting element included, then I, I think you're right. It would it would just be a conflict with other meetings that people might wish to attend that day. So if the clerk, treasurer, and moderator were by Australian ballot, yes. we wouldn't have to have the clerks right. there to check people in, because there wouldn't be voting. Right. So that would be an option for November. Yes. To yeah. put, that put them to Australian, Australian ballot. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think that might be what makes the most sense. Maybe give direction to Deborah to talk to, she's going to meet with the clerks, clerks anyway. and come up with a proposal you know, with that ballot proposal to 
to change it to 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 be Australian ballot to vote for those officers. So it doesn't. And so, a couple of options of state uh, before our own town meetings to have a to have a meeting. To have a meeting. Know. But if I only need it, I could just be information at that yeah. point. And I, I do worry about having a meeting during the day for our board when while town meeting is um, a day of, uh, in some cases, a holiday for workers, but not at all. Not mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we were to schedule a meeting at 8 a.m., it may conflict for many people on this board. We might not be able to even have a quorum mm -hmm. on that date as well. So um, uh, just to take a, a quick temperature, uh, how would you feel about an article on the November ballot that would have election of the district officers, the moderator, uh, treasurer, and clerk, take place by Australian ballot on town meeting day in order to obviate the whole problem of conflict? So, the moderator? There isn't a November ballot. There yes, isn't? Yeah. No, it's not during midterms. It's off. Okay. So it would be a special ballot. It would be a special, it would be a special ballot. Well, well that's so much for that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Corinne. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think Vera's point is well taken that that was a decision made by a number of hundred people here in, in April and just sort of countermanding that because of scheduling. I think we should really think carefully about that. I okay. Think, uh, but I, but I think, think it, was, no, it, it was a recommendation. So, uh, yeah, go Dorothy, because you made the motion. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, I just think we ought to play out some ideas. I mean, suppose if we had the um, district meeting on town meeting day at 8 o'clock, and so all those town clerks and everybody have to get here and set up, and then we would start our town meetings not maybe not till 10 and they have to pick up all their stuff and move to the towns which is a lot to do and I think I remember that meeting when we set the date for town meeting day and at that point most of us who were talking about when we would have the meeting didn't stop to think that if we had the meeting of the district on town meeting day it wouldn't happen at all the little towns. It had to happen in one separate place. So it would be a lot of work for some people. Um, and, and I don't think we'd be going against the public to change the date. Um, and I don't know whether we can do it after a town meeting. I don't remember what the parameters are when we're allowed to have it. But I really would recommend having it um, at a later date and making it a separate thing. I, I don't care when you have the, you would have the Australian ballot for the board members, but I think it's just gonna make a lot of confusion to have this meeting on town meeting day and then everybody, it's not everybody, people, you and I who are on the board have to come here and then go back to our own towns. Yeah. It, it, I think it's asking way too much of the public as well as our town clerks. Yes, Joe? I, I think we should consider having the annual meeting in the evening when more people could be there rather than the morning. Mm -hmm. Monday mm -hmm. evening, for um, example, the Monday before town meeting? Yeah, yeah. some well, towns do that, but Chris, we, yeah. we are running into a conflict of people being away, so I'm, I don't know, trying to figure out. And it can't be earlier than. Could it be before break? Yes. Well, you have to have an informational meeting within, within 10, 10 days. days. The okay. annual meeting can be held any time after February 1st. Um, uh, Vera? So, uh, Dorothy, I agree. I don't think that a lot of thought was put into how it was going to look on town meeting day. And I, I'm all for figuring out a better way to have a meeting within the 10 day um, restrictions, guidelines. All I'm saying is I think we need to have a, or Deborah needs to have a conversation with the town clerks to get their input yes. and get, hear back that guidance from them and their opinions before we make a decision on whether or not to have it voted on on a special ballot in November or waiting until March. 
I just I would prefer to get their feedback and have that conversation happen sooner. Agreed. Jonas? Just a question. The informational meeting needs to be held within 10 days of the budget vote, not the annual meeting. Within 10 days of that those articles are voted upon. It's the release of the articles on Australian ballot. That's what the informational meeting is for. The um, annual which, meeting. Which, which, at, which at this point is? Which at this the, point is on town meeting day, so it would qualify. Which, which, which is the budget. So even if we Correct. move the annual meeting budget, we'd still be voted on by Australia. Exactly. Okay. Not changing any of the okay. votes for board members or for budget. It would still be Australia. And, and are, there, are there any challenges to moving the annual meeting before or after town meeting day? Does it matter if we hold that before or after the <laughs> I don't know of any districts that hold annual meetings after town meeting day because you are your primary purpose is to present information about your budget and to vote on officers which have to be prepared to take on the role after town meeting day. So I don't think that would work logistically. Is the informational meeting separate and apart from the annual meeting? It does not have to be, but, but can it be? It can be. And it's only the informational meeting that has to be within 10 days of the actual Correct. vote on the budget. Okay. Right. So you we can actually have an annual, annual meeting in October? If we no, want. February 1st. Or February 1st. Or actually in 30 days? Yeah. No, yeah. after the statute says between February 1st and June 1st. Oh, there okay. are some okay. towns that vote their school budgets mm -hmm. later in the spring, uh, not on town meeting today, and, mm -hmm. and that accommodates them. Yes. Yeah. Berlin always had a pre-town meeting. Did every town mm -hmm. have pre-town mm -hmm. meetings? Yeah. Saturday. Usually in, yeah. in January or? But no, it, no. no, they don't no. know. It's Saturday, 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 Saturday before, the night before. Yeah. Yeah. The 32s was the night before. It was the night before. And Berlin was the night before. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We had our house same day. Um, Last year we had a night before. Night before. East yeah. Montpelier was Saturday. Saturday morning, so that morning. I think Worcester was the whole, the same day. And Middlesex was the we, had, we would have informational meeting like the night before and then also the preceding Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, two opportunities, but that was the informational meeting mm -hmm. for the budget. Yeah. So anyway, since there is no November, oh, Corinne. Um, Vera's right, the town clerks need to be spoken to, but yeah. not only are pre-town meetings at different times, the way they run town meeting and the hours that they are open for voting vary in all of the towns. Mm -hmm. So you really can't come up with anything that works without talking with all yeah. five of the town clerks. Yeah, information collection is clearly um, in order. Um, and it doesn't appear that we're under any sort of time pressure, um, the same kind of time pressure we would be if there were to have been in November. I can report uh, back with the information I received from our town clerk discussion next time, and then if the board would like to make a decision as to how to proceed for this year, um, if we don't have a November vote anywhere, then obviously that's not an option, but you can always call a special meeting yeah. vote. Yeah. Yeah. I think it should be an action item in case yes. we have the information, yeah. Yeah, if it's on the agenda, yeah. because if we did have a special election, having it on what's a typical first Tuesday of November, voters are used to that. If we had to have a special election, it okay. makes sense to have it on a normal cycle. Yeah. And then we have to do that like 30 or 40 days ahead of time. So we right. have to, have to yeah. warn it, which yeah. is why we have to vote next time. Yeah. 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 And we would also be incurring a cost. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so do we know what that cost is? Uh, no, that's what several learned. I will find yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are a municipality, so anytime we run an election, we incur the costs. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, have uh, do you feel like we can wrap this one mm -hmm. and move on? Yep. I, I do. I'm just shaking okay. my head at the state. <laughs> I, I think it's just to clarify, because when we were getting advice for what the, the reason it, it was an oversight, we, we were electing the clerk at that time at the at that meeting, at the organizational meeting on the floor that day, and when we were setting it for town meeting day, it was like we were assuming that we were voting Australian ballot, and we didn't want to have a separate election for that. So we just had like conflicting, you know, we were, yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, so um, we will have the pleasure of revisiting this issue later. Um, now, 4.2, community mapping. Um, I think this is one that you can... So we sent a little, in, in your package, 
because what, what we're hoping is that because we don't you know have a lot of time and uh, just what Rick was speaking uh, just a little while ago we want to make sure that we reach as much people as as we want and this is in mapping the community is it's not necessarily uh, we're going to get it this is the only one time that we do it we'll keep doing it but just finding it uh, uh, basically people that get together so there's gathering places like I can speak to East Montpelier like the old town meeting house, the brick church, the food pantry, Dudley's. There's places where you post and there's places where people gather. And there's key members of the community like in Palace, like you know, we mentioned some we have a template by any means it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but we would like to collect that information to make sure that when we as a board are reaching out, we are trying to, you know, really target everybody and know where people are getting together so we can't always expect them to come to us. So those board members can go to them. So you know, just trying to create a, a system to to keep us uh, organized in in trying to reach more people, especially as we're headed to budgeting. So I don't know if there were any uh, questions or concerns. So this would be non-school non -school events, but community events, correct? Um, yeah, community events, like the historical society, like, you know, everybody talked about how they got together in, uh, in Worcester at the transfer station, if, if the recycling part, or if there's any groups, this could help us in many ways, like there's, a, like, for example, Vermont Farms that is not failure, they, you know, it, it could, it's good for, kids going there too, but it's also a good to reach to whether it's volunteering, whether it is we want to get information mm -hmm. to them. So the purpose is like uh, one of our goals was to you know, improve the communication and get the engagement with the community. So it's just to get us started while we formalize as we go through our mm -hmm. book review, formalize our committees too, but this will get us uh, started in knowing where people are and how to reach them. Where would this list live? I was thinking at central office, and we would all have a copy, right? Four mm -hmm. members would have a copy, but mm -hmm. I, that's a good question. I, you know, in the past, we used this when we, believe it or not, when we were in at 46. We, we were not always successful, but we got information from, from people, and that's where we posted, or that's who we try to reach for our policy teams. We post them on those uh, places. We already do that when we, do our warnings, but we just warn in three different places. So it sort of depends. This information, we can decide to use it however we want to mm -hmm. use it. For, for now, it's just collecting the information. Mm -hmm. We can put it on the website. Yeah. To the community members across the district. Yeah. And it could be helpful other. even for mm -hmm. our administrators, you know, like if they need to reach out to our organization, and they mm -hmm. might also have a better context. And what is it, Keystone? Is that oh, the, well, Keystone community member is uh, is that template. So Keystone community members, for example, uh, Corinne and Rick and Paul. Rick, and <laughs> you know, like yeah. Yeah. So yeah, or, or there's people in the community that <coughs> when I talk about Keystone, there's people in the community that are uh, that seem to be able to have endless amount of volunteer <coughs> knowledge. So, like, so it's better, like. You know, reach out to Edie and Marty, you know, for example. I, I know that they will know, you know, know people or be able to pass information of have a, a, a potluck roof or, you know, Edie runs the signpost, so I know that she can reach out more of the community. And that's just a term that is used in different places. Too. So when I think of uh, Calas, I would say, you know, you want to reach out to, you know, Scott or Carol Passage or Scott or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, before we go to the public, anybody else? Yeah, do we want to get, um, if we're putting people's names yeah. and numbers, do we want to get their permission that we yes. can do so? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. yes. Certainly if you're going to put it on the website. I think yeah. well, yeah. 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 given it to putting it in some type of internal contact, so. yeah. maybe something doesn't want to be well, One thought is if you could call, give us the information, we'd be, we could reach out mm -hmm. and confirm that they'd be agreeable to having it so that if you don't have time to do that. We were hoping we could use your local expertise yeah. to identify the people, at least initially, and we would be happy to follow up and be sure they were all right with publication. 
would like. I think we should. Yeah. 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 We could also concentrate just on organizations first. What? We could also concentrate just in groups first. Sure. So like, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Like Twin Valley Senior Center. Yeah, there are any religion numbers groups. Numbers. Like, yeah, there's any number of examples. I'm not worried about Keystone members of the community. We just want to make sure that we're reaching, and a group is better than an individual, anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Chris, yes. It ultimately has to be an individual to contact. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you think <laughs> about our what's next, it's Middlesex. We all have chairs of those yep. committees, so that would be an example of a contact. The contact. And they've already agreed mm -hmm. to the contact case. Mm -hmm. For a purpose. Yeah. Okay. Any other board members before I go to the public? Rick? Yeah, during the consolidation process, so the public outreach was pretty busy. And we had most of the people that attended those meetings were organized by people outside the Keystone members in the community who talked to people and got them in there. And so, I mean, I think that's somehow really important. It, it's important to do that in an unbiased way, but I think there's something that is really important in this too and it's come up and certainly in the past year or two we've seen i think you need to spend much more time engaging the select boards in yeah. this process because they are much tight more tightly linked into the community in general than than most of the school boards are too and they bring a whole different perspective and they bring people that do and don't have kids and yeah, I think you've got to use a lot of tentacles in this. It's not good enough to post it on the, you know, the, the Maple Corner store door, and it's not. I mean, I think you have to use Keystone members. I think you have to use select boards. And, I mean, it's really important that people come out and participate this in these meetings at critical times. And it's on you to figure out, you know what, you and I kind of know what those times are when decision making is being made. And when it's actually important to have feedback from the people you're representing, and it isn't on the day they vote, it's yeah. prior. It's so, yeah. you know, I think this is, if you want this to be successful again, you know, it, you have to get the people in here. And that means get, they have to know about it. And it's got to be from somebody who, in some way, that will inspire them to be there. So. Yeah. Thank you. Good. So, um, do we have do we have action on this, or is no. this we're just basically saying please, go please do, do it? it. <laughs> yeah, we have read a deadline. The memo, yeah. It's a, right. <laughs> read the memo. And yeah, <laughs> Chris. Um, Chris asked about it. Oh, just kind of off of what Rick said. Yeah. Like commissions, com commissioners. Yeah. Um, committees or. Yeah, I mean okay. whatever mm -hmm. whatever comes to mind as a mm -hmm. likely prospect. Okay. Yeah. We so, certainly have all of our select board uh, members and you know other individuals in town government already identified, so we wouldn't have to you know duplicate that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like the Ladfield Committee, Worcester. I don't know. Yeah. The other conservation commissions. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. sort of figure it out, okay. sense which okay. is good and which might not be as you know suitable or. Yeah. Productive as a match, yeah. So we have homework for our time. Yeah, um, so Fleur, you said September 30th is the deadline? It doesn't have to, you know, like that's something that we came up so with. We're going to have to give us a point to focus yeah. on to get it started. Yeah, okay. It's not, a, it's not an it's ended not a, thing. Right. No, it's going to right. evolve right. and evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, 4.3 is the book. It's, yeah. Um, what are you thinking, Flora? It's, um, it's already a little after eight. We've already postponed it once. Um, I think it's important. I, yeah. Um, Very quickly. As much it, as I care about the other issue, I think this is the work that we need to be doing. Uh, is it doable quickly? Jody? We have a schedule for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, It'll be a quick 30 minutes. It, was, it might be a nice change of pace. Um, okay. Small group discussion. All right. Thank um, you, guests. This is the, the book club segment of the, <laughs> oh, God, of the board. Can I propose that at 8.30 we can stop and move on to the next? That's 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. it's a quick yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah, 8.30. Chris is quick.
We'll see. see. We'll see. We'll try. If everyone in your groups can be concise, we can shorten the time. All right. Okay. Decision. Ms. Crawford. All right. So really quickly, I put over here the, a modification of a school reform initiative protocol that we're going to use. We use some of these protocols from them in uh, the retreat, so you might remember different protocols that we use. This one's a making meaning protocol. And I'll get out of the way. Um, so you'll have two to three minutes to get in groups. The groups are listed in green there. And review the text for quotes or phrases. So if you already did that, you came prepared, you did your reading, and you have some pieces that you can pull out, that'll help us save time a little bit. And I'll move all of these down to four minutes each. So I'll do that while you're getting ready. Um, round one, you'll share a quote, something that you noticed or something that resonated you, with you from the two chapters that you read. Round two, you'll ask questions. What questions did the text raise for you? So you'll bring out questions to the group. So if each person does this, because you're going to have groups of four, even a group of five is still a group of four. Um, <coughs> If you have one minute or less, we can get it done sooner. And then the round three, making meaning or significance. What is significant about what you read? The whole of it. Round four, what are the implications for your work and our work together? And then we'll come back to a whole group and just kind of share out a debrief of how do we feel about the protocol that we use and anything that really stood out from your small group discussion. Questions about the process. Are the groups stable over time? This is just for tonight. This is just okay. for tonight. So the groups will change over time? I think so, but that could be up to you. If you feel like this group worked and you'd like to stay with that group for some reason, um, I think you could certainly recommend it. Okay. So go ahead and find your groups, and you can, um, we can do... Group one, group two, group three, group four, and group five, find yourself another space. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> maybe, maybe in the back of the room or on the side. One, two, three, four, five, I don't know. Okay, let me get this one right here. Okay, let me get this one right here. So there were a lot of good conversations happening. You know, Dave and I were able to drop, eavesdrop a little bit and hear what was being said in different groups. Uh, this is your moment to share out something that you thought was really pertinent, um, implications for your work that you discuss in your small group that you think the whole group needs to hear, and or thoughts about the protocol itself in, in using this process for a discussion. Anyone? Chad, would you like to say anything about our group? <laughs> I guess I would. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think I have to pass that point. My brain. Yeah, it, it, brain fry is, a, is always a good excuse. Yeah. I, I use it myself as often as I can get away with it. Um, it was a great true. discussion we had, I felt. And, um, I, I, your comments about, um, about building democracy, I thought were. Oh, yeah. Um, just ensuring that the democratic process is part of our structure and our work um, and going forward and in the way that we organize the board um, and that that's not lost because it feels like we just with the consolidation we could lose that a little bit and making sure that that remains yeah thank you and, and also figuring out what we're actually doing yeah um, having goals and being able to incorporate those in. Um, group two. So it's a, it's a radar. So I'll, I'll be I'll be brief, I guess, because it's it's late. I think two of the important things like Vera came up with. Right? No one of us is more important than the rest of us. We mm -hmm. spend, so that was that's an important quote that we all really like, and it came back 
over another, and I think it sets the tone for collaboration. Uh, we talked about a little bit about a uh, culture in um, Lori brought up, you know, you know how to behave in the library and just you know creating that that culture was something that we were interested uh, on. Um, and then uh, uh, and then Kat, once we started to talk a little bit more in detail, you know, uh, they were asked us what is collaboration and it said it's you know it's a, a, it's a style more than a verb. So what does it mean? And it brought us back to you know not one of us is more important than the other one, and that we're all not going to have the same opinions, but that setting this more collaborative circle would would help us with that. And then on challenges, we we spoke about uh, you know just everybody really willing to be a learning group together, and what are the challenges of that, or what are the opportunities on that? And I don't know if anybody else from the group wants to. I think you captured the discussion really good. I um, I just want to say I think this is an important for part of what we need to do as a board, and it is going to take time, and it's going to take some time at our meetings. But I do think it's an important part of getting to know each other and what culture we want to have for our education environment. Thank you. Um, group three, do you have a spokesperson? We didn't elect one. We talk about the difference between climate and culture, right? That climate is sort of what happens in culture is what you decide it to be. You know, we, we talked about the intentionality of the process. Um, we talked about how the structure, the PLO structure, um, is intended to make sure that the different Organizations, the different learning groups know what their roles are, right? And avoiding the micromanaging, you know, in a board, um, and also, and I, uh, oh, right, uh, that it, that it also acts as a as a guardrail to prevent a board from sort of spinning out of control and micromanaging, or from becoming passive and reactive. Um, um, but I was also encouraged to hear from from Steve and Gillian. Um, that 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 our culture is healthy. That the culture of the school system is healthy, um, and I think that what we do here uh, will augment that. Thanks. Can I jump in just because group four we jumped off that too? Is that okay? Yeah. So um, I was struck by um, sort of the definition and the way in which PLOs operate and how it is fully aligned with the trauma-informed system. And that has been a, you know, an effort we've been making here in Washington Central over the last few years. Um, and it aligns nicely to the principles that we are trying to create across our system that the leadership team has been working on. And so I think if this makes sense, right, if we really want to be trauma-informed from the board or to have equity from the boardroom to the classroom and we're expecting our teachers to create these cultures of learning, it would be great that our board would be more that as well. Thanks. Was that was that the group five? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so group four. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Chris. I was waiting for that. Um, you had the best pull. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to play. It was the Ronald Reagan quote. Um, uh, but he, um, so what, what jumped out at me uh, was uh, surround yourself with the best people you can, um, with the best people you can find. Um, <laughs> delegate authority and don't interfere as long as the, po as long as the policy you decided upon is being carried out. So um, I've appreciated being a part of a, of a leadership team um, that appears to be, it's pretty flat in nature and, and there's a lot of trust. Uh, that we are, are all sort of singing from the same same sheet of music. Um, uh, if there is an issue, uh, we don't have a problem speaking to each other in confidence to make sure that we get back on on key, so to speak. Uh, so, so it's it's very nice to be empowered and trusted, uh, but that does not say that it does not go without you know uh, inspection. So inspect what you expect. So it, it's been it's been. Powerful in that way, so that's why that particular quote jumped out at me. And, and we, 
we can talk about how we, we do start from a, an advantage point with a very powerful and good culture here in our school system. So it kind of echoes uh, what Kelly was saying before. Um, so we're, we're very hopeful. And, and um, Bill made a good point about um, how reluctantly we may have been to do this particular segment of our, of our agenda. Uh, it was very helpful and important that we do it. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Yep. Great. Wonderful. So um, does that conclude this portion of our, um, and I guess to be continued in the future? Thank you, Joe. <coughs> yeah, Thank thanks you so much, Thank you very much. You're a good whip cracker. <laughs> so you get a lot of practice. Okay, so 4.4, um, committees. We have um, policy committee to stand up. Would anybody like to make a motion to stand up the policy committee? Where's that one? What's that stand up. Mean? Stand up. Establish it. Oh. <laughs> I'll make that motion. Thank you. So Chris moves. Any second? I'll second. Um, Mary Lynn seconds. So um, the charge, uh, all of this is on page 21 of the packet. The charge would be to review all existing policies, make changes if necessary, and secure board approval by the end of June 2020. Draft new policies as necessary. Um, anybody want to be part of this? Um, I, I um, did you provide you to come through the coffee card? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you have to provide that to the other committee yeah. students? Yes. Just That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Red hand or capital grants would be fine. <laughs> Okay. I want in. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Are you meeting at Red Hand? How can we read these at the Red Hand? It's a wonderful place to uh, kind of hang out. Yeah, we can meet at Red Hand. Hand. <laughs> Go over to the oh, Postal Cafe too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is clearly the Red, Red Hand Patronage Committee. Okay. <laughs> um, anybody else interested? It would be nice to have three members from the board. And policy committee, the way I think of it, even though um, obviously its primary function is to look at policies, uh, I would imagine that there may be occasions when it would extend its purview to include, you know, if there were changes we needed to the Articles of Agreement, for example, mm -hmm. or um, any other kinds of uh, textual governance type questions, that those would fall within the bailiwick of the policy committee. So it would be great to have a third. Um, Is there a second already? No. Uh, oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. So who's trail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no, I don't know. Did you say yes? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. great, great. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying I thought you were going no. for the coffee. Yeah. No. <laughs> great. Yes. Yeah. 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 sharing. Yeah. 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 So, Scott, I'm gonna, uh, um, you know, one of the things that went round and round was school choice. And yes. I think we made a specific um, um, yeah. uh, uh, pledge to deal with school choice. Right, right. Um, and so I think we either should establish a separate committee or maybe add that on to this. I think that should be part of the Just so that we yeah. were I was, meeting I was our... Just that we, because it is something that you've agreed to work at. Yeah. So I think it, it should begin with policy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you have to establish the guidelines as to how you wish to implement that. Mm -hmm. which so policy. Just expand the charge somewhat too. Um, so is, is the charge for existing and, and proposed? And proposed. Oh. Okay. So, um, we don't. Um, Does everybody not, yet? not yet. No, we're we're not. Um, would you be Sorry. willing? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the question is. But no. Policy committee. For which policy? I'd rather not. There's involved. I understand. There's quite a bit. We'll do it. Thank you, Marilyn. That's great. So, uh, any further discussion of this? Right hand. No further? We'll go to the post office cafe. Yeah. And I'll join you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Okay. Um, <clears throat> so are, are we ready to vote then? Sure. All right. So we have a motion to establish the WCUUSD Policy Committee with the charge to review all existing policies, make changes if necessary, and secure board approval by end June 2020 to draft also, that, that would be a period after 2020, draft new policies as necessary, period. The membership would be Chris McVeigh. Do we need to name, do we need to come up with a chair? Okay. You can okay. figure it out yourselves, okay. Chris McVeigh, Jael Pulskamp, and Marilyn Strecken. So, ready to vote? Okay. Propose an amendment to the charge because she said make policy and that would be we could go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Make policy. How about proposed policy as opposed to make policy? Or make changes if necessary? Propose changes. changes. I mean propose, propose. I mean it's I think it's proposed. Proposed. Uh -huh. the board to decide uh -huh. propose, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Propose okay, there's an amendment. Okay. Um everybody okay with that amendment? Mm -hmm. Consensus? Good. All right. Proposed changes. Ready for a vote then? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Great. Okay. Congratulations and thank you. Scott, Scott I would just also ask that um, while yeah, oh, we heard. Jody and, and Aaron both had a pivotal part in helping get the policies to where they are right now, and yeah. so fantastic the, so Aaron I'm not necessarily volunteering them from this seat but they certainly would be people to ask in the admit at leadership team for uh, for support um, thank you Steve yeah. thank you very much yeah okay great um, next uh, next up is administrator attendance at meetings this is a discussion and the question is Monthly, bi-weekly, ad hoc, what should it be? And I don't know what the, I, I think what I would propose, if we have to take an action, I would propose moving that the superintendent set the, the norms for administrator attendance at the meetings, depending on whatever is sensible. So I would, I would, um, you know, when we're reading this book now, it talks about um, direct access to staff, stakeholders. Um, I think I would rather have a at least a monthly, uh, if not every two weeks. And I'm not, I don't mean to impose on you folks, uh, but I think if we're going to fulfill um, at least some of the criteria of this book in terms of creating a more fluid, dynamic interaction between the board and stakeholders, uh, that attendance should be a regularity rather than a um, ad hoc. Ad hoc. If it was monthly, perhaps we do the book discussions monthly versus every, you know, I, I don't know. That's because I, I, I agree with having the stakeholders. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just on that in terms of interacting, not necessarily for a book group, um, but just having, you know, Informational sessions mm -hmm. from um, our new staff. Yeah, sure. I, I think we've talked a little bit about that in our group too, and I, I, do, I don't mean to impose, but I feel it's through budgeting season. It's been really important that that we both stay together as we are right now, at least until January, even if that might be asking a bit much. And so that, that's just, and I'm not saying that the way it has to be, but I, that I think this right now is kind of but would be crucial. But whatever is good. Administrators. Yeah. Can I? I want to hear what you guys mm -hmm. have to yeah. say. I, I kind of want to know, like, in the short term, is two month, two times a month too much? How are you guys feeling? Real quick. We're not taking names. <laughs> yeah. um, and I can no, tell I'm you right. what I said this. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, if we're talking about collaboration or we're trying to align and come together, um, I do not want more meetings at all, um, I have plenty, but I do think this is a time for us to start to figure out how to collaborate with each other, and maybe not forever. I like the idea of setting some timeline or um, 
feeling like we've got some measurement for how to decide when we've got to that that prime piece of like we're in alignment and now what is the most useful um, amount of our time? Way to spend our time. That's just me. Don't anyone get mad. <laughs> so can, can, can do you, so is it every meeting? Is it so once a month? I it, for me, yeah. I feel like it's important that we're establishing a relationship that crosses five towns. And six buildings, and or seven buildings, um, that we meet every two weeks. If you're going to meet every two weeks, we should participate in that. Um, again, that's just for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it forever, but I want to wait until we start to feel like we have some sense of trust and relationship that has been built, um, and then start talking about how to sort of divide the labor. Okay. And I should say that there, but you know, if there's an occasion where there's an absolute. Appropriate reason why an administrator can't attend a meeting. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that is absolutely fine. So, <coughs> somebody has to table. Anyway. <laughs> well, I'll just say, I agree with Kat. I mean, not to feel bad like you're wanting us to come to vote because it makes us make me feel valued that you want us here. So, think about it maybe that way. Um, I completely agree that we are building this together. I, at least, the feeling is that. Um, and, uh, to value our input and, and thoughts and participation and to be part of that is, is crucial. Mm -hmm. I think it's also helpful for us to be here to hear the conversations to be able to bring them back to our schools because if we weren't, you know, if we weren't here, we would be out of this loop as well, and that makes a lot of people out of the loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just offer that you those uh, Venn diagrams that we saw on that page, we're one small, <laughs> we're yeah. one of the Venn diagrams. We really don't have a tremendous amount of representation from around those. So as those grow, I think our roles will probably shift in focus and our attendance will as well. Um, Dorothy, did you uh, Well, my suggestion was just um, to have the book talks early on the agenda so that if any of you have some special thing we could at least be involved in that, and then they, they could leave if they had something they had to leave for. That, that was just a suggestion. Yeah, thank you. Any any other board comments? Um, it's just extremely encouraging to hear you guys say that, really. It, it's so valuable having you here. Yeah, it is, and, and I agree. And um, please don't get me wrong. Um, even though I have uh, a great aversion to forcing people to be in a place where they don't necessarily have to be in order to get something done. Um, uh, even more, m my, my, um, my concern is more technical. I mean, we as a board um, supervise the superintendent. We should not be involved in um, telling the principals who report to the superintendent, principals and leadership team, where they should be. Uh, this is why I would <laughs> put that responsibility, in addition to every other responsibility, on Deborah's shoulders and, and um, trust her judgment that uh, I think you haven't heard her talk about this issue before in the agenda setting meetings, but I think she is completely on the same wavelength as you with regard, especially to the early stages of putting this all together. But um, I would I would prefer, as a matter of you know just um, board professionalism, even though we're all amateurs, um, to limit our control to the superintendent and not try to, you know, extend it to the leadership team by compelling attendance. So I don't see it as a matter of control. Um, I see it as a matter of establishing relationships and the opportunities that uh, most of us as a board um, get to see administrators is pretty meager, um, especially if you don't have a, a child in, in the school. Um, and even if you do, um, you don't get to see the administrators across the district all together. So I, I don't think it's a control issue. Um, I think it's uh, establishing a communication, getting to know you, and hearing concerns. Um, because it's good to hear what works, what doesn't work, 
um, and that is in information to inform us um, as we move forward. And we are establishing a new entity. Um, you know, I think by um, by not having administrators here, even for the next month or two or however long that takes, we're just sliding back into the old entity and the old way of doing things, and I don't think that's uh, a good yeah, start I, for I, us. I don't disagree with anything that you're saying. All I'm saying is that instead of, <laughs> our, instead of our doing it, Deborah can do it. Okay. She, so may I comment about that? Yeah. So in our July retreat, we spent a lot of time talking about how our administrative team, our leadership team, could collectively work uh, in concert with and in partnership with the board. And we actually scheduled our meetings, our administrative leadership team meetings, to uh, occur in opposition to or in opposing weeks of board meetings. And we spoke about our administration attending the board meetings, and we had consensus about it. So we were, I know that this really arose because a board member in our last meeting had suggested that we might be, um, it might be too much of an ask to have uh, folks with us every time. But I think in the, as long as we're continuing to develop the governance structure, uh, the input and the information that our administrators can provide uh, firsthand is very valuable. And of course, uh, while I appreciate your um, deferring to my oversight, uh, I don't have the history that uh, a longer term superintendent would have. So you are able to gain more ready access to information in response to questions, and your time is valuable as well. So those are some of the things we were discussing this summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, you've heard it. Um, is there anything more to it? Oh, Rick, sorry. Yeah, being someone who gets to deal with meeting on meeting on meeting on meeting with multiple groups, my work, you know, what you're doing is really generous. You know, every two weeks, you know, for everybody to give this kind of time late at night, and you know, I would be really disciplined about, as a board, about thinking what those principals and you know, what these support staff, you know, what you, you, how you're going to build that relationship, what are the things that you really want to talk about. And maybe pick you know something for every meeting or some perhaps, and they can they should have some vehicle to be able to really convey that ideas or concerns that they've got subjects for discussion. You know, so you actually have a micro agenda to give you some outlines of discussion because otherwise it can turn into a waste of time. As a board, you're dealing with a lot of things in this room. Some things are relevant to them, some things are not. So I like that idea of kind of striking them off early for that, because early in the meeting, you're actually fresh. Yeah. These relationships are going to be really, really yeah. important. You know, this communication up and down. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. And after after that, I mean, it might be possible to, you know, to liberate them. If there's a part of the meeting that is administrator intensive. I think and then, has suggested that also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Can I add one more thing up before we go? Yeah. Things like those yeah. committees, like the policy, mm -hmm. and, and obviously these guys have tremendous thought in probable, you know, input on them. So I hope you've got vehicles for them. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, using them. The leadership team needs twice as long as you need. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, good. So, um, if we're going to take action, we need a motion. I think there's consensus here. This is consensus. All right. Because that becomes compelled. I think that would be compelled. Okay. If we took action. Okay. I was. This is saying we welcome it and we want the interaction. Okay. Very good. I, I was. I was taking the agenda literally, which is always a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, so, okay with the administrator attendance. All right. Um, 4.6 now, VSBN membership. I would like a motion, please, to approve payment of VSBA dues for FY20. If someone would like to move that. I'll make that motion. Lindy, a second? I'll second that. Jonas will second. Okay. So, discussion. Before we open it up, 
I just want to um, lay out the format. Um, it's already five minutes before nine. Good God. Um, Jaya's brain is fried, as is mine. But nonetheless, here's what the, um, the plan is. Uh, first of all, do, do the administrators need to be here for this? You're welcome to be, but you don't need to be. Yeah. You're, you're, you're welcome to be excused. If you are interested in remaining, you're of course are welcome to remain. But well, I will. That's why I have one. Okay. Very good. Well, All right. <laughs> good. Great. Okay. So um, the way I intend to to do this is to have 20 minutes of board, no more than 20 minutes of board exclusive discussion, and then have um, up to 10 minutes for anyone among the public who wishes to have anything to say. And then one last round of board statements, if you will. And then, unless there are compelling reasons not to, I'd like to have a vote so that we get this out of the way. Um, OK, so basically, we have the motion. The motion is to approve payment of VSBA dues for FY19 to FY20. Um, what this boils down to is, is the timeless dilemma, should we stay or should we go? <laughs> and in this particular case, it's a little bit complicated because of history, because of strikingly different personal contacts with, um, with the SBA and experiences, some quite positive, others perhaps not. So um, what we'll try to do is just go through and I'll try to moderate it in, a, in such a way that it um, maintains as much balance as I can. Okay, thanks. Um, Flora is giving me a note from Dan MacArthur and Christina Naylor from um, who are Wyndham County Regional Reps on the VSBA. So, <clears throat> if you don't mind, uh, would anybody like to start? I'll start. Chris? And um, I will vote not to um, fund the VSBA uh, this year. Um, I think over time, the VSBA has taken um, positions, particularly in, in regard to Act 46, um, that have been detrimental to school boards as a whole. Um, our, our numbers are now decimated because of Act 46, and um, you know, the argument could be that uh, VSPA did not promulgate Act 46, um, the legislature did, uh, but I think the VSPA um, helped shepherd it through and gave uh, the less legislature at least some cover um, by supporting Act 46. Um, as it, as, it, as it was um, enacted into law. And uh, more recently, when there was a, a legislation um, maybe delaying for another year implementation, the VSBA um, uh, arguing against that delay, um, and I think calling school, uh, school board members who were favoring it obstructionists um, was problematic for me, um, just because the VSBA uh, it should be a, a big umbrella organization uh, taking into account um, the entirety of its membership. And I understand that governance procedures that people vote and uh, positions are established. Um, and when uh, we, we took up this matter, I think in June, there was a discussion about democracy and, and how sometimes you win, sometimes you lose on certain votes. Uh, but democracy is also freedom of association. Um, and deciding how you want to, what organizations you want to be associated with. Um, so I would urge us not to fund for this year the VSBA with the hope that we would see improvement um, in how um, they, it as an organization relates to um, school board members. Um, I, I, after our, our last meeting, I, I made a request of Neil, is it Odell? Neil Odell about whether or not the VSBA would uh, produce information. I made specific requests of them and they refused. 
um, saying that uh, they, were, they were a private organization um, and he did not have to respond to my request for, it was basically a public records request. Um, so I am pursuing that uh, request uh, through the court. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I tend to think that the VSP would be bound to be a quasi-public agency for the purposes of the public uh, records law. Um, so um, I would um, urge that we not support the VSBA this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, any, you may also ask questions, if you like. I've been in support of the VSBA, mm -hmm. just as a person who feels when I was the policy committee chair, their um, model policies were very helpful. They had already been vetted through attorneys. I felt that the, what they were providing for us was very helpful. And uh, I look at them as bigger than Act 46. Uh, part of that could be also my background of not being as against Act 46 as many people were and feeling there were way too many board members to support the number of students in many of our school districts or the schools or whatever. So I came from it from a different angle in that respect. Um, I believe they have um, information that is useful and helpful. I was thinking of it kind of like towns having VLCT when they're, they're too small to have in-house support and knowledge on all the laws and policies that go into running an organization and being a member of the SBA provides us that. So that's where I come from as looking at it bigger than Act 46. Mm -hmm. um, I, it seems like the bigger issue with supporting the SBA is that the trust has been broken and being able to kind of adequately um, speak for members of, of the school boards. Um, and so I'm wondering, outside of Act 46, have there been other instances that um, the SBA has not spoken in alignment with what the majority of the school boards have felt that they needed representation, uh, specifically at the state house? Are you going to Can I answer a couple of questions? Sort of okay. up, or would you like uh, Sue to answer from, at the real council from the VSBA <coughs> to answer Thank that question much. specifically? And, and welcome. But um, I think my preference is to have um, to confine the discussion to the board mm -hmm. and to residents. Um, and any. So, so what I would. You know, but to particularly to that to that question, I, I just want to go back a little bit. So to to, to say that uh, the VSBA uh, uh, spoke against the majority of the school boards in Act 46, uh, we were not majority. Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 position that it took, for example, in the in the delay was the majority of the board voted to to make a statement and say, please do not delay. And and the reason we had stayed neutral. During that, during that part of, of the vote, and we decided that because the, the bill that the Senate was putting forward and Baruz was going to put it on the boards to make the decision for themselves, that we needed to speak, and we had a two and a half, a two and a half hour or three hour meeting that night to get to consensus, and most of the people, the majority of the people of the board, and that's how that position came came out. I, I agree with you that our choice of words, I it was probably not, uh, you know, and I've been criticized about the civil disobedience or obstructionist. And I think what we, but that what the what the board was trying to say, we were not trying to silence any dissent, but we were trying to not have any more kind of uh, um, unethical behavior. And that's what a lot of our different boards were, you know, were experiencing. And that's where that comment came from. But it, so in response to, to that, and now in what you were expressing about the, it, it, 
I passed around two things. One is the Wyndham, because uh, they are also, so both Dan and Christina voted, uh, no, they didn't want us to have a statement on that. And, and there were two other, one other board member that voted, that, that voted no at that meeting. And they sent a letter to us today why they also choose uh, to stay, because the SBA is more than just one one issue. And in the, in the comment that you, you were making about how do we, uh, let's see how they do, and then for a year, and then we decide to, to to join again or not join again, then we won't be part of the conversation, right? So, you know, the the way to, so if you're not satisfied, so I am your representative, right? But I represent, besides the U32, I represent several uh, other boards, right? It's Washington and, and Orange, and the majority of Washington and Orange did not, except for, they were not in the current, in parts of Orange, and we're two members, so the majority of them did not want to play. You know, they didn't want to play, and that's what we. That's what. I, that's why I voted uh, no in delay because the majority of the people not, didn't want to play. So uh, I actually meant to start this conversation by stepping even way back because a member of the House community at the last meeting asked if I had a conflict of interest in having an opinion in uh, how we all make this. So I read a policy. Yeah, the policy is, you know, the first policy in in our in our website for conflict of interest. So, so first, I should have said that that you know, it's it's up to you ultimately to to decide. But after reading it, after reading the policy, there were, no, I can't get it to open it, several times. I, you know, I'm not I, when I participate in these meetings and on the BSBIs that labor a lot. There's no uh, financial uh, gain. There is, uh, I get dinner and um, and five dollars for 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 mileage and and there, and when I was nominated to 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 be your representative, I was actually nominated by Jack Hoffman, who you know who was part of the anti forensic. So it's not just uh, uh, I would have never nominated myself because I thought to be part of the USB, I needed to have all this required knowledge and you know have been in this for many, many years. So Jack nominated me, and then the year after, I stayed on the, I, I run for, for the office, and last year I became part of the executive committee, which we have been trying to reach out to, to more. So I would suggest that instead of getting, moving away from the VSBA, we, we try to do more of a restorative justice kind of thing. So mend our, mend our relationship, like we want to hear from you, we want to know, you know, we want to uh, we want to make sure that we're represented, we want to make sure that you are being, that we're, you're being heard, right? And if, if you're not satisfied with that, I'm not up for re-election right now, but there's another opening, but I'm up for re-election next year. So, so let's, you know, let's be part of that, of, of, of that conversation. I think it would be, a mistake for us to move away from from the VSBA right now when when we're starting a new uh, a new governance we're gonna need we're gonna have more responsibilities we uh, they provide just for example the book that we're discussing right now now that I'm part of the executive committee I was able to go to Philadelphia and I know that I'm talking a lot but we are the direct beneficiaries of a lot of uh, of, of this of this knowledge and the VSBA just the other day came and gave us uh, 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 training. A training. Uh, so the VSBA is mostly uh, our mission is to support school board members and in the performance of the role to serve as a collective voice for the public, uh, you know, for the for the public policy environment in public education. The people. There's a lot of things that are going to be up to stake in at the, at the legislative session in the next session, and we want to be part of that conversation. Thank you. Do we have opportunity to explore comments? And ask questions about comments. That yes, you and, and I would also, believe it or not, like to say something too. Mm -hmm. But but Dorothy. Well, I I also do not support paying um, this a uh, fee. Um, our two of our towns are already facing um, higher taxes this year. If there's been a year delay, we would not be facing that this year. And. Um, I, I, I went to a lot of Senate hearings, Education Committee hearings, and House Education Committee hearings, and it always bothered me that 
I was a citizen who could come to the State House back and forth now and then, whereas the people from the VSBA and Nicole Mace, I recognize, and some others on a regular basis who were there not only for those hearings, but in the cafeteria and talking to the other reps and the other senators, and really having a lot more face time to get their impressions across. And I have to say, I was very, very hurt during a House Education Committee hearing regarding H39 when we were asking for the year's delay. Mm -hmm. And Nicole Mace advised them that they should not give that, de that decision to the locals. And I just felt like, you know, uh, there was no respect for our small school boards when you use that kind of a term. And I, 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 could not, I could not advocate paying taxpayer dollars for that amount of money. I know they provide training. We can get training other places. I know they provide policy. You can look at other school district policies and get some good ideas and good wording from mm -hmm. them. There are ways to make it without them. There is another um, uh, young organization called the Association, no, not Association, no, I forgot the word, um, Alliance of yeah. Vermont yeah, Alliance. School Board Members um, that is, get, has gotten together and is made up of many people who are part of the 30 plus district with the Supreme Court, but they are wanting to support the local school boards and get um, more into that. So I, if we're going to use the money for an organization, I would support that, but I would not support in any way sending any of my personal tax dollars to pay those bills. Yeah, thanks. And, and if I may just very briefly, as soon as anybody says very briefly, you know that it won't be. But um, looking at the question, should we stay or should we go, the, the criterion I'm thinking should be what best serves our people, young and old. And although VSBA has done good things, um, and one of the best things is the opportunities that it's offered for you for. And I'm, I'm, grateful to it for that, if for nothing else. But it has, as Chris pointed out, also done a lot of damage, either by commission or omission. Um, and just, it hasn't supported us. We've been members, and just last year, in, um, for the 2018 resolution, Worcester, the Doty School Board, submitted a resolution on debt, which was the mildest mannered that you can imagine. And the board, the VSBA board recommendation was do not pass. And um, you can check that on the October 18, 2018 report, um, business meeting, on page bottom of page 39. Um, in other areas, to answer your question, Marilyn, um, the VSBA has pushed uh, a, uh, an approach to labor relations, to teacher negotiations, that. Um, has been very, very different and inimical even to ours. They have a kind of, um, tend to have a scorched earth policy, very hard line bargaining, which came out most recently in the, in the um, health uh, insurance discussions when an unfair labor practice was filed against the teachers union. Um, that's not how we operate. Um, and finally, the, uh, I'm just concerned that, you know, um, in the bit that I put into the packet about the, the money, the SBA just, I have no problem with their, with their being a pass-through for state money to consultants. That's done all the time. What I do have a problem with is the SBA advocating strenuously for the program that is essentially funding them during that time. And the Orange North 
um, supervisor union, which is friendly to merger, which merged successfully, um, raised that in itself. They were concerned enough about it to make that specific proposal that VSBA um, not advocate for, uh, speak for all school boards in its advocacy. Um, so my concern about VSBA is that being members, we haven't really gotten anything out of it. However, because their um, money does seem to you know, magnetize their moral compass to some extent, we might have more leverage actually by being out and having the, um, the leverage of, of the potential of their getting us back in if they're willing to, to start really to, to take us seriously and to protect our interests, um, to have our backs instead of stabbing us there. So the so. resolutions that we pass, in, so the resolutions, we, we worked on resolutions. And we, you know, they were recommended to pass. You know, and one in that and one in, um, in, in, in this in year. Place. This year, now that it's, so, so it's that, that is, so, that, so that, do we do we lead in the past, or do we move, do, do we want to be part of the change? Do we want to participate in that change? We would completely lose our voice in being able to be part of, of that change. I think we'll have more of a voice if we're not a member, actually. We'll have more influence if we're not a member. So who's going to ratify our negotiations? We won't have a board. Right now, we have a board member that's going to help. They them, haven't been listening to us. Excuse me, I yeah. shouldn't interrupt. Yeah. So, pardon me? Oh, I'm so sorry, Brian. Yes. Um, just have, during the VSBA meetings, does the membership of the VSBA board, do they understand when they took a side that relationships and trust has been broken to the point of, do they take any ownership of where we are right now? Yeah. yeah. Because I haven't even heard any of them say, you know, we take ownership of what has happened, but, you know, apologize, move on, like something. And all I see in some of these back and forth documents that have been handed around is just more animosity building that they believe they were right and they did no wrong. No, we've been working on that and, you know, if who uh, was able to speak right now, she just came from a meeting last night, the, the same thing. We, that's what we're working on, repairing relationships, right? Right now, I guess myself, we're involved in uh, hiring a new executive director, for example. We, they, like, we are, you know, we are working. We represent you. You are the member. So, so we, we take. I'm starting to speak in Spanish. We take. <laughs> you know, we take this really seriously, right? So, so yes, we 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 can make mistakes. There were use of words, and we we understand that. But you know, like you also have to understand that just as when we vote here. You might have three people that are on one side and seven Absolutely. people that are on the other side. And at the end, we all have, so if you read Dan MacArthur and Christina Naylor's uh, email, that's, you know, that's just what happens. But we don't, at, at our board meetings, we don't want anybody that, you know, because it has a dissenting opinion, can't participate. You know, that's what makes it, that's what makes it rich, right? So by us say. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't feel like it's because I have the advantages. You know, when I participate in this meeting, in, in this meeting, so in this organization, it's because I feel a responsibility for public education, not just for ourselves, but for the state. And and now we're trying to bring that nationally too. We have always participated nationally. Like at this last meeting, that uh, because Nicole was leaving, I was able to go to the leadership uh, meeting. We if if Roman hadn't gone there, we wouldn't have been a regional meeting. Or, so, so we're bigger than what we see here, and it might be from my background. You know, I come from Guatemala, where you don't have the ability to have this public education, have the rule of law that you have. So, what they do is, I don't, I don't know if I can stress enough the importance of being part of that conversation, because we won't be able to be part. We'd be able still as citizens, but together. And and I know it's been criticized how we. Uh, do things together with the principals association, with the superintendents association. At the end of the day, is is for the benefit of the kids and the advance of the public education in our state, right? So, you know that I yeah, cool. I can say a lot. Thank you. Let me ask a couple questions. Um, 
So this this letter from um, um, Dan McArthur and Christina Naylor. Um, yeah, the, the last sentence. Last she didn't have time. She didn't have time to sit, to. We have documentation for that. There's no always that it's been signed. She had four I, meetings I, today. I, so. Um, it seems to me that it's uh, in error. Yes. Uh, because it doesn't make any sense to say at the yes, end. Yes, you does. Yeah. You must dis so, th is it is it accurate that um, as a BSBA board member, you cannot speak against the board? I mean, it says. That I mean, the rules of conduct you say that, uh, or the um, the code of ethics that the board has says that a board member cannot engage in activities that harm the association's ability to pursue its mission. In another section it says, um, it would be considered misconduct for a member of the board of directors to fail to adhere to the duties stated above, and it has a bunch of duties, including a duty of loyalty, um, or to engage in conduct that is otherwise injurious to the association. It seems that there's not, to me, that only seems like if you're speaking in, in a way that it would undermine the BSPA's mission, you were being disloyal to it. Um, and before in your conversation, you said that the board members were being acting unethically, and I didn't know what you meant by that. No, I board asked, you, uh, asked board. you to explain that. So um, board. Well, um, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. If I, Jonas and Jael have not yet had a chance to weigh in. If I might. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wait. You'll wait? Oh, wait. I have one yeah. question. Why yes. is, what are the dues? $7,000. Yeah. $7,000. Um, <laughs> and these fees on page 32, so did we use their services in the superintendent search? No. No, no. we did it Those ourselves. Page, yeah. We hire somebody else. Yeah. Is that good? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, was there a request for information there, Chris? You, you, you may mention that board members were acting unethically, and I didn't know what you meant by that. And I don't think you meant here, but you, I think it was just a general statement. Yeah, no, it was a general statement. It was not. It was not board member. It was in general, our organizational meetings were having unethical behavior, and you know I don't need to explain it even at our meeting, right? Like people were being calling names to people, and then, so. So what we wanted to avoid was that that division, that that continuous uh, division that was uh, that, uh, that was not productive for anybody and it was not healthy and not a good example for for our kids and and that's what okay. they was in this meeting. Thanks. Um, I've gone way way over. Um, shall we go to the public for very as briefly as possible? And then come back for final words, and then a vote. Um, Rick, you know I we've been engaged in this, I've been in these hearings, and as a school board member at the time, you know to hear what was coming out of the mouths of these people. They, they were not representing us. And I don't mean me. They were not representing us. Our boards. I don't think you were representing our board for the way before. Um, I'm going to say, shh, shh, just as no, uh, okay. Uh, I'm, my point is here: we cannot. This goes way beyond Act 46. Act 46 was just a large lift. A lot of the things that we deal with BBSBA on are not issues of loyalty or representation. This was a test of who they actually represented. And it was certainly not most of the school boards in the state. It was done, in my opinion, even tastelessly. You know, I, at this point, I would, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt of staying in actually validates their actions. They say, wow, we can get away with this. And this was pretty egregious. I would never do that. We go out now, the onus is on them, to prove that they are worthy of our, to represent us. You know, I, that, I think it would be a huge mistake to stay in this organization for the time being. Let Thank them you. prove to us that they actually represent the school boards around the state. Okay, thanks. Um, Corinne, any, or Paul? Um, we're uh, residents only. 
And well, you are um, yes. John. Yes. Yes. You're John Pandolfo. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, John? Well, um, I think it would be short sighted to leave the SBA, is my opinion. I think that there may not be realization of what the SBA provides, um, but you know, if you spent time talking about policy earlier, I have your new, what I'll call policy manual off your website. You've got 44 policies here. The vast majority are policies, essentially, that the SBA created. Um, and they are, as Lindy said, they are vetted. And um, a lot of work gets done to make sure they're the right policies. And I have the SBA's model com policy for comparison. And I haven't gone through word for word, but I'm familiar enough with this and familiar enough with the policies of this district that I believe they're by and large almost verbatim many of the VSBA policies. Now, if that's not worth $7,000 in itself, um, and if you weigh the cost of one lawsuit from having a policy that's not properly made, again, $7,000, I understand this is a very emotional issue, but I'm asking the board to consider being, you know, the stewards that they're obligated to be of the taxpayers of this district and the students of this district. And to me, um, you know, you had a big discussion about collaboration and trust among the people in this room. And I guess I would go back to say, you know, is the VSBA an office of four in Montpelier or is the VSBA all the school members, all the school board members from around the state? I don't always agree with everything my particular political party does locally in Vermont, nationally, or anything else, but I'm committed to being a member of the, of the process and part of that party, so. Um, and, you know, you have the policies in place. Could you survive a year without, you know, being members of the SBA and using, utilizing their policies? Yeah, you probably could, but the district that I work for is paying the money and the taxpayers are there are paying for these policies, and honestly, I think it's, I, I don't believe it's fair for that, and the SBA could probably, by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, make access to their policies member only and exclude anybody who doesn't want to be members of the SBA. Whether they do that or not is, again, another piece, but to me, again, a one issue like Act 46, when I'm not sure if anyone else in this room is aware of what the SBA did and what their stance was on Act 166, Universal Pre-K, Act 77, Flexible Pathways. You know, Act 173, the special education work that's going on right now. There's an awful lot of things that they do on behalf of all schools, all children, all school systems. And, and I understand, again, the rawness about the particular issue that's on the table right now. Thank you. Corinne. I really think we should pull out. I won't go into a lot of reasons because I think a lot of good reasons have been stated. And I think we should pull out. Thanks. Um, anybody else? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think uh, <clears throat> we should pull out, too. Uh, and I think all organizations go through ups and downs, uh, doing what we all think they should do. and. And having times when they hit some rough stretches, and when they do, uh, we as the public, it's our duty to <clears throat> give them a little guidance. And uh, in this case, maybe we should have them know that our guidance is that we'd like to feel like we really counted, uh, and we do count here in this district, and, and uh, that they're <clears throat> paying attention to us instead of obstructing things uh, might make us more interested in working with them. Thank you, Paul. Good, okay. Um, so, last round of final statements. Dorothy, would you like to start? And we'll just go around. 
I, I feel as strong or stronger than I did when I first started. I was again paying for my tax dollars, my one or two, then part of 7,000, but I, I really think um, we need to make the Vermont School Board Association pay attention that they have been, been acting in a way that has hurt some schools, some districts, some students, taxpayers, and the only way we're going to get their attention is by saying, we are not going to pay for this anymore. And hopefully, if they, if they actually see the, that they were not exactly right, that they will do something about it. But I, paying dues again and hoping that they'll see our point of view I think is pointless. I have no further comments. Okay, thank you. Shall I have? Mm -hmm. okay. I have changed my opinion. <laughs> okay. I believe that we need the support and the backing. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you. And Jose, we, we are listening to you. You have, at the last meeting, you had the entire executive committee present at your meeting for the FBA. I am listening to you. We want to make it different. We are hiring an executive director to be, you know, we're going, there's some changes coming. There's, you know, we are, we want to keep representing you and just thinking about special education next year. It's been a moratorium for a year. Just thinking how that would affect us in, in our budgeting decisions. We should think twice about leaving the BSBA. Let's participate in the democracy that we all say that we care, that is part of the Thank you for that. And, and thanks to everybody. Um, from my part, uh, Paul, I, I very much appreciated your, especially the way you put it, about <coughs> the public and us as representatives of the public giving guidance when an organization goes astray. Um, and that's, that's the spirit in which I approach this. Thanks. Marilyn? Um, I don't. I don't see how leaving VSBA makes us a better district or creates a better education for our students. I, over the last couple of months, I've been really encouraged by the moderation of tone and the less strident approach that seems to have been taken in the work that we're doing here and in the larger issues around education in the state. I feel like we've gone backward a little bit tonight. I understand that some of the language used, right, like obstructionist, like the locals, is hurtful. Um, but I also don't think we need to invoke other less helpful metaphors. Um, I did not know all of the things that VSBA worked toward, including universal pre-K. It's disappointing that we're hung up on Act 46 again. Um, this seems punitive. I understand why it doesn't seem helpful to me. I'm not certain that we're sending a, I'm not sure we're sending a strong message by leaving. I don't think that those $7,000 are going to make much of a dent in their budget. I don't see, I don't see I don't see the benefit, except um, that it that it may help to. I don't see the benefit. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I'm very um, mixed emotions about this. 
I I agree with a lot that's been said on the for and against staying in our membership. Um, I guess the biggest thing for me that we don't have the opportunity to have the luxury of time is hearing from the VSBA that you know, to learn and to grow, you have to take ownership of the negativity and the, the issues that they caused. And yes, they, they did not help us, and they did cause some issues. And for them to learn and grow as an organization, they need to take ownership of that. And I agree with Jonas that pulling out is not going to give us any better a voice with them to change and to learn and grow as an organization. But at the same time, I have not heard them directly take any ownership, and that's a part I have. Everybody has to take ownership when they do something wrong, or and when they're supporting a group and they're not supporting the voices of that group. Um, so I, I don't know where I stand right now. I don't know. Well, perhaps we'll find out in just a moment. Mm -hmm. um, Chris. Um, when when does payment need to be made? If it's going to be made? Typically it's in the month of September. Is, is there a not? deadline, an actual day? Mm -hmm. Can you let Sue answer that question? Um, really that question. Could ask Sue. Yeah. Um, do you know the uh, sort of the deadline for payment of dues? I believe it's stated, it may be in the bylaws, I just was reading it um, today, I believe it's six, within 60 days after the statement is received. Uh-huh, thank you. Have we received statement the statement? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to receive the statement. Um, as much fun as this is, I would like to um, make a decision one way or the other. Okay. And um, so what I'm, what I'm um, right here, Vera, uh, pretty clearly in terms of the VSBA has to acknowledge some wrongdoing, some wrongdoing. Yes. Um, and um, is there any appetite for the making payment contingent upon a vote by the VSBA board acknowledging wrongdoing? Not for me. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm completely like torn. What? I'm completely torn. I'm going to abstain from a vote, so I don't know where that leaves you. Um, why are you going to abstain? Because uh, it, would it yeah. be helpful to bring to have back, more information? To bring back. Uh, 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 we 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 meet so, on day eleven. Yeah, I'm not throwing my idea. The uh, the here's the thing. Um, this is a discussion, and I'm here on I'm sort of. Uh, drawing on Jonas's observations, that is one that has to happen. We need to do it as much as we all hate it, and um, but it needs to get done in order for us to be able to continue. Um, I don't. I, I would. I would much rather, you know, have the vote go against me right now than have to prolong this. And what I would like to make it sooner. Is that right? Call the vote. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to vote then. Is this is this um, a conversation if we do terminate now that we addressed in a year? Like this, where will we be? Um, this is just for this year. Just for this year. And I expect that there will be and particularly in the course of discussing the um, the book and you know allied materials, that we will will come up with um, an approach, a board consensus approach to it. That's that's mm -hmm. sort of a thought about um, because I I don't want to. This is just for this year. I don't want to go any further than that. A board consensus on what when you said it. A board consensus on what we want out of our involvement in an organization. So, um, but that's 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 not relevant to this particular um, discussion mm -hmm. and this particular motion. 
So. So if we vote, I just want to say that I would have to step down from the VSBA mm -hmm. immediately of the executive committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And so, so does that create a conflict, though? I mean, uh, a conflict in what for, for board, board of vote? I mean, that you have a, a personal stake in staying on the board. But I don't have any money. If you read your policy, I don't have any monetary money. It's not, it's not, it's not necessarily a monetary thing. It's a thing of value. Yeah. If, yeah. If, 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 if that's a conflict, then every VSBA board member who's also currently been on a board and has approved payments to VSBA also has a conflict of interest. And so then yeah. that would sort of make the whole concept of a membership-based organization unworkable. Yes, I'm going to just make a, Good point. a chair um, determination that we're well, not going to worry about it. Not, Yeah, we're just going to, let's, let's oh. vote. Okay. Yeah. Um, all in favor of approving payment of VSBA dues for the FY20 year, um, for the 2020 fiscal year, please say aye. Aye. Okay, can I ask you to raise your hands? Okay. All opposed to paying the VSBA dues for next for this school year, please say nay. 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 So four. And all, any abstentions? One abstention. So this is just about the worst of all possible words. <laughs> <laughs> OK, in the event of the tie. Scott, can you, um, yeah. can you get the, she is part of the SBA, right? Yeah. Can, yes. can we actually hear from her? Here we do what? Here. Yeah. About, about. Go ahead. Vera had a question before. What was it, Vera? Um, Whether they were just taking responsibility? Yeah. Like, um, I would like to hear her words about how they're going to move forward and grow from the experience. No. That I, you know, no. she, are you a board member? Okay. So I don't think okay. she can speak for the board. Yeah. Um, however, it's my understanding that in the event of a tie, the motion fails. Is that correct? That is yes. correct. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. Wow. Oh gosh. Okay. Well. So then the motion fails. And we go on. Um, finance. Do I have a? Do I have a motion to approve the board orders? I move to approve the board orders. Jonas moves. Chris seconds. Has everybody signed in? Did everyone sign? Okay. How did that work um, for seeing them ahead of time? Very helpful. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. Were there any questions? You can't remember. Top right off. I do. Oh, Chris here. Do we need two separate motions for two separate board orders? Yes. And different amounts? Yes, I'm happy to document that. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go and see the dollar amount if he wants to. If you have the dollar amount in front of you, readily available, yeah. I would suggest that you make the motion. So we have four capital warrants here. So we have to do four different ones? Oh, you no. just do the grand totals. The grand totals. Yeah, the auditors have On two of them, though? Yeah, so what's happening is we're approving August we approve? and tonight's. Okay, so now so we're caught up. So next time we'll just get one. Okay, I move that we approve board order for 76 cents. And then there's another one. And then the second one is in the $228,938.17. So, questions? Diamond Turf Supply, I think it says herbicide, but I'm not sure what this product was, and I just wanted to know if we can find out what 
that was by any chance? Herbicide. Yeah. Oh, is that for the, the track? Is it for the track? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay. So, um, board fund balance transfers report. Okay. This is Lori's thing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait. Was it a vote? Oh, sorry. I don't think we voted. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Um, so, all in favor of approving the board orders, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed? Great. Okay. Now, forgive me, 5.2 Board Fund Balance Transfers Report. Okay. I'm going to discuss it. Yes. So, um, one of the questions you had was how did the year end and where are we going to begin the balances? And so, what I put together was a memo on page 33 giving you more of the definitions used by the schools, not just in Vermont, but throughout the nation, on um, what is a general fund, um, what is a capital project fund, um, and you can see that in the document. Uh, but I'm sure you're more interested in the numbers, so if you turn the page, I can kind of give you a summary um, from page 34. And I'll talk about totals considered by individual schools, but what I provided here was um, what actually came over for what we used to call fund balance. Um, the beginning balance entries are actually called transfer from reserve accounts. So in total, under general fund, which is the operating budget, we have two categories. Um, the first is operations, and we brought over 1.4 million. You see the total on the first box. Um, for operations. We brought over for technology reserves, which also includes money for fiscal software, 481000 And the grand total of our operating fund balance is $1.9 Do you see that number over to the right? Um, so that's how we started the year. Um, there's another category that is near and dear to everyone's heart, which are capital project funds which are typically used to acquire or construct major capital facilities, as you heard about the track, et cetera, from Stephen tonight. So in total, we brought over $2.8 million. Um, I'm going to just keep going if you want yeah. me to. Yeah. Um, the next category is a permanent fund, and you'll see Worcester is the only school that has one. And what that is, is a fund set up um, by a donor that restricts you to only use the earnings. So the interest income is all we can use at, and it's only used at the school of Doty. Worcester School District is their legal name. Um, but that's what the permanent fund is. Um, we also brought over, um, the next box um, has enterprise funds, which are fund six. Those um, are funds that typically have fees charged for activities, and the first column you'll see is the food service programs. Um, we brought over 168000 there. We brought over money for community connections, um, 84000 Our dental program is self-funded. You'll hear more about that next month. We brought over 179000 And our health reimbursement account um, is another self-funded program. We brought over 390000 so again, those are um, funds set up that are self-sustaining. And they're not, their revenues some are somewhat paid for from school budgets, but the primary um, reason why they're enterprise funds, and this is not just for us, it's for everyone, is because of the fees charged. Um, the next category that we brought over were trust funds, and what those are, are private purpose funds, things like scholarships, um, people who've passed away for estates, um, we also have other restrictions. Sometimes people who are living give money and they say you can only use this for the music program. Um, so we brought over 78000 for trust funds. And what I did at that point was to give you a grand total because those all came over as revenues. So it's $5.6 million in revenues. And the next category is a little different, but it's a custodial account. And what those are are student activity funds. Um, students are always doing things, um, whether it be like drama that might not be in the school budget, et cetera. And what you see here is just a summary by building of what came over, 125000 
Um, so I wanted to assure you that every penny was accounted for. You'll see pennies on this report. That's not usually my style. Um, you will also see that um, we have moved over every fund um, that had prior restrictions to the facility and to um, the board restrictions, um, donor restrictions. We followed every category. So what came in was what left the other businesses. Um, and the auditors are in the process of completing their work. Um, we were on hold for a bit because the state treasurer's office just gave us a final uh, report that they need to continue working on the audit. Um, if so far they have not found any changes, but if they do, I will notify you in the future of any adjustments to these numbers. So I've talked fast. I'm familiar with having five minutes. Um, I'm excited to meet with the finance committee with Deborah next week and talk more about this and talk more about this current year projection um, and a budget timeline or whatever else are the topics for the agenda next week. And at our next meeting, we'll start talking about this year at the next um, full meeting. Anything I missed or if you think of something, send me a note. Um, but I wanted you to know I had so much fun. <laughs> Somebody is. That's good. Um, any questions for Lori? Uh, just one, um, what is your target for the general fund? Um, we're going to talk about that next week at finance okay, um, because one of the recommendations that was made to the boards was to reserve a 2% to come up with a total, but both U32 and the executive committee did not transfer their excess money to the capital fund, and there is some need to do that, mm -hmm. so we'll talk more. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, other questions? No. No? All right, um, moving along then. Um, approve Rumney Memorial School Playground Equipment Bid. I'll make a motion that we approve Rumney's Memorial School Playground Equipment Bid. Thank you, Lindy. Second? I'll second. Dorothy seconds. Good. We have that on the very last page, 36. Should I give that number as part of my motion um, or no? Do we need to give the, it just the amount? Bid? You could, yes. That would be helpful. Okay. Um, in the amount of $22,420.75 to, to Petinelli and Associates. Excellent. Um, any discussion? Yeah, uh, Governor, where's yes. the, um, the work, the rehab work? Is that not the big? The, um, what we discussed at our, and Kelly, since you were the lead on this for several weeks before I joined the group, um, my understanding was that the work that we were going to be doing in the landscape mode yeah. was going to be less than $15,000 was our oh, anticipation, okay. and it doesn't okay. require okay. a public bid, Great. Okay. Uh, but we are proceeding with it. Great, thank um, you. Was, uh, the next item on the agenda addresses one other large item, but we'll get to that okay. after you vote. Right. Any other questions or comments? Should we go to a vote then? Okay, all in favor of approving the Romney Memorial School Playground Equipment Bid as described by Lindy, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Good. All right. Who seconded it? Sorry. I don't think that was Dorothy. 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 Okay, yeah. I didn't hear anything. Other end of the um, Okay, next. Authorize the Finance Committee to approve Rumney Memorial School tractor bid. The Finance Committee is Floor and Vera as co-chairs, and me as hanger on. Um, so, can you address that issue? Please, just to explain what it's about. Sure, definitely. So um, <coughs> we needed to do some investigation before we were able to uh, place the bid for the or make a public the bid for the tractor. Uh, it's a small tractor which is designed to uh, remove personal removal primarily on a grassy path that is adjacent to the preschool playground. And uh, right now we don't have the equipment to do that, and so it's a necessary part of the project. We anticipate that the cost will be between twenty and twenty-five thousand. Um, and but the bid was not received. We weren't able to um, provide enough notice to our bidders to have that prepared for you this evening. But in the interest of trying to promote the project forward, we'd like to recommend that you authorize the Finance Committee to approve the bid on that project when they meet next week. Lori or Kelly, did I miss anything? 
Uh, just we've advertised it, and we've advertised the bids it. are due on the 11th. Yep, the day before you meet. Okay. That will allow us, if you give that authorization to the Finance mm -hmm. Committee, then we can proceed with moving the project forward and having that tractor available before the snow falls. And then how much is it again? We don't have the, in the in range of the quotes yeah. were between twenty and twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. It definitely will be about fifteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are no legal issues to having the finance committee approve. Not if you authorize them. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Let me make that motion. Okay. Chris moves to authorize the finance committee to approve the Rumney Memorial School tractor bid. Do we have a second? I'll second. Lindy seconds. Any further discussion? You up for it, Vera? For it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Should we move to a vote then? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Okay. Um, we have a approved hires, but do we have hires? Nothing this evening. Um, we thought we might, but we, we do not. So we will postpone that topic to a future meeting. Happy to hear it. <laughs> um, I would propose maybe just. <laughs> having future agenda items continue to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of reflection and summary of meeting, um, this was very hard, but um, I, I greatly appreciate the honesty and the integrity with which all of, all of you and, um, and the public as well spoke in addressing this question. Um, and I, there's nothing really to feel good about. We can only hope that this takes us in a good direction. Um, so, anyway. Can you explain what does the motion mean? So the motion fail the, 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 um, yeah, uh, so the motion fails? Yeah. So we bring it up and it makes me do it? Or whether it just fails? I think I it's up to the board to decide if they wish to revisit it at a future meeting. Uh, yeah. That, there were some questions. Would be present. We didn't have all all the memos. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Choose to do that. Yeah. So, um, the as the French say, la fête continue. The the feast continues. Um, all right. Uh, does anybody have anything that they would like to say before we adjourn? Okay. No? I just want to remind us that Chapter 3 is our next reading assignment. <laughs> and um, by the end of September, if you would be so kind as to please give us input about the community map, mm -hmm. that would be very helpful. And, um, and thank you for uh, your kind attention this evening. Thank you very much, everybody.